Welcome back, I'm Peter Ward. You're about to meet an amazing young woman. At 21 years of age, Katie Holloway's already had to overcome the biggest challenge of her young life. We caught up with her at her school in Northridge, California, where we learned her physical disability is only part of the trauma she's had to deal with. At first glance, six foot four Katie Holloway appears to be an able body center for her Division I college basketball team. What shocks people most? She's wearing a prosthetic leg. My disability has been something that I've always known and I haven't known anything different. So I, um, you know, I've never looked at it as a disability. Katie's courageous story began 21 years ago in Seattle when she was born without a fibula in her right leg. Her parents were faced with a painful yet necessary decision, amputation. It was the hardest thing we've ever had to do. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I felt, you know, okay, oh my God, my kid's going to be a crippled for the rest of her life. And I mean, how, how is she going to deal with that? How are we going to deal with that? At just 20 months old, Katie's lower right leg was amputated. She had to learn to use a prosthesis. But her first steps came naturally, an early sign of her future as a distinguished athlete. She walked after five minutes of getting her prosthesis on her first one. It was just like, you know, there wasn't anything better. I still think about it and start to puddle up. Uh, that kind of justified Jane's and my decision. My parents get emotional about it because their decision to amputate my foot was the hardest they've ever had to make and also the best decision they've ever made for my life. The path to success wasn't easy. Katie constantly shielded herself from the cruel comments of her classmates. She had a few challenges in middle school, but you know, it hit, hit, hit her hard and us too. Aware of the pain, Katie's family carried her through the rough times. My family has been my rock of my life and you know, my parents have definitely been there the whole time. I thank them every day for that and when I couldn't think I could do it anymore, they were there for me. Um, you know, picking me up, holding me up, saying you can't do this, look where you're at, you can't stop now. Katie's star was on the rise when she led Lake Stevens High to the 2003 West Coast District Basketball Championship, surely making her a top college prospect. But that came to an end when one Premier League coach, blind to Katie's impressive numbers, became distracted by her prosthetic leg and refused to put her on the team. When I was cut, it was just devastating. And that's all I really wanted to do was play, you know, and um, to be a part of a team. She didn't understand why, and we didn't understand why either, because she was six foot tall and, and had scored all the points and been very well received on that select team. Katie took it hard. All discussions about her leg were now off limits. I'm not any different than anybody else, and that's always how I've wanted to be treated. So I wanted people to judge me as an athlete first and then um, say, oh, by the way, she has a disability. Former coach and current author John Devine recognized Katie's talent and helped her put her back into the recruitment spotlight. I went up to watch her play, and I was very impressed with what uh, she was doing. And actually, it wasn't until after the game was over that I found out that she had, had a prosthesis. But she just looked to me like a good basketball player. Katie's dream soon came true when she moved from her hometown of Lake Stevens, Washington, to Southern California on a Division I basketball scholarship. As the leading scorer with annual conference honors, her teammates didn't think twice about their star playing with a disability. Spinning in the lane, finds Holloway with a tough pass and puts it up and in in the first field goal. He didn't give her comes. any grounds of any kind because she had an issue which they figured she's another player. She's wearing the uniform, they expect her to perform and, and she did. Besides basketball, Katie's also a member of the U.S. Women's Paralympic sitting volleyball team. And while Katie feels honored to compete in Beijing this summer, she's most proud of putting the adversity behind her. For the first time, she feels comfortable in her own skin. When I um, joined the um, Paralympic volleyball team, I had to take my leg off and go out there and play. And I hadn't shown my leg to anybody but my family and closest, closest friends. And from that point on, my life turned into a 180. You know, I was open about my leg, I could share it, and I was, you know, finally at ease with, you know, sharing with other people about it. I think Katie is 
who she is because of what she's been through. She just has pushed and pushed herself and never accepted anything less than what she could do. I hope that people can see me and know that they can do it, that they're capable of doing um, whatever they put their uh, minds to, that, you know, if, if you're not physically able, that you're mentally able to do anything. 